our congregation of sisters, which is the only New Zealand-born congregation of religious women, was founded at Jerusalem, Hiruharama, up the Wanganui River. The story of the Sisters of Compassion and their relationship with the Wanganui River stretches back more than a century. Established in 1892, they became a highly respected religious order known for nursing and charitable works under the direction of its founder, Mother Mary Joseph Suzanne Orbea, also known by her Māori name, Mary Hohepa. Orbea died in 1926 and is in line to be canonised by the Pope as a saint of the Roman Catholic Church, but her story is relatively unknown. She's not a Mother Teresa, for example, but she's equal to Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa stayed here once, by the way, just saying. But, um, you know, we could put millions, thousands of dollars, thousands upon thousands into making her better known. But we have to consider, is that the best use of our resources? Orbea was educated in healthcare, as well as chemistry, botany and pharmacy, and used these skills to care for the underprivileged, establishing children's homes, nursing homes and hospitals throughout Oceania. Centuries later, the Sisters of Compassion are declining in numbers, but Aubert's work continues. This year, for example, the Wellington Soup Kitchen celebrated its 120th anniversary. We Sisters of Compassion, we are a endangered species. What's not endangered is compassion. And we've got so many co-workers, friends of compassion, benefactors and volunteers, particularly at the Soup Kitchen. And we're only as good as we are today, so to speak, because of all these co-workers and companions along the way. Headquarters for the Sisters is in Wellington's Island Bay, on the site of the original Home of Compassion Hospital, where Aubert is buried. Here, her extraordinary life and legacy are celebrated. She came from France in the footsteps, really, of Bishop Pompelia who was the Bishop of New Zealand at the time, a Frenchman, she heard him speaking in a, um, can you imagine, in a little village hall where she lived, and um, she knew she was going to the Antipodes. She, he was looking for recruits. So she came out without her parents knowing she was coming to New Zealand on a whaling ship. Imagine that. Smelly old thing. And to Auckland. And her reason for coming was for education for young Maori girls, that's what he was looking for. And he formed a little community of sisters. They had a boarding school for Maori girls. Bishop Pompalia eventually moved back to France. Catholic Church was in great debt and he had to downsize a little. So the little order was disestablished and she went to Hawke's Bay with the Maris priests as um, what you call a third order. Orbea eventually came to Whanganui with two Josephite sisters to resurrect the mission at the remote settlement of Jerusalem. Now she went by Waka, of course, up the Whanganui River, three days it took to get there. And Suzanne was like a laywoman, you might say. Now I don't know what happened, but those sisters only stayed about 14 months. They helped re-establish Education was their focus, the school. But they left. A few other women sort of took an interest in Suzanne and supported her endeavours up there. Orbea had formed strong bonds with the local women, but faced opposition from the Catholic Church, who decided the mission at Jerusalem was to be disestablished. She fought for it to be saved, and it remains to this day as a retreat managed by the Sisters of Compassion in partnership with Tangata Whenua. So she went down to Wellington to see Bishop Redwood and she was heartbroken that she'd need to leave. And he said, no, you won't. You will be my sisters and you're destined to compassionate the sorrows of all people. You will be called Daughters of Our Lady of Compassion. So we became a congregation. Fluent in te reo, she used her medical training and newfound knowledge of runawa, traditional Māori medicine, to make remedies renowned for their healing power. The sales supported the mission. People were sending infants particularly up to her to care for who were sick because she just had a way with children and healing. And But a few kids died because and she didn't have the resources, medical resources. So she came to Wellington thinking that she would build a hospital for children. She had turned six in her pocket. 
Although not technically miracles, her ability to get things done was tremendous. She built two hospitals, established a nursing school and countless other enterprises for social welfare. The real needs of the time was unemployment and men were considered breadwinners. And of course, they were searching for work, a home with an empty belly and cross and angry. And, you know, their wives got hiding perhaps, or whatever. So she thought if the men, this is how I understand, if the men had a, had a full belly, Lisa go home in a happier frame of mind. So the soup kitchen was established 120 years ago this year. And um, then she wanted to help support women who were having children without the support of a partner, let alone a husband, because they were needing to give their kids away because they had no means of support. And so she established the first creche. She saw the need and she did her best to fulfil the need. But when the need was no longer there, she moved on to something else to where the need was. Susan Obey had the amazing ability to be friends with everybody. And she had friends with governor generals, she was friends with um, politicians, she was friends with the ordinary people. It didn't matter who they were. It's, she, she saw God and people. Remnants of the cherry orchard and gardens planted by Aubert and the sisters still remain at Hiruharama, as does the poetry that arrived with James K. Baxter in 1969, another part of the rich history of Jerusalem. 68, we went for three years when I was a young sister. I loved it. I just, and of course, then the next year Baxter had arrived. And so that was, I found that very exciting at the time. Um, I love. Uh, despite all the stuff, I love the um, Baxter poetry of Jerusalem, that era, I could relate to it so well. Just as you go up the drive on the left, in that field on the left, there's a house, he lived there initially, and then everything got out of hand and all these people started arriving. So they moved up to what we used to call the big house, up the back of our place, up a little track up the back. And then I'd go up for you know, extended retreat, six days, ten days from time to time. And then the year 2000, I went and lived there permanently for ten years. During Sister Cosgrove's stay, the documentary How Far Is Heaven was made and released in 2012. It looks at a more modern Jerusalem. Because it's a small community, at a major level they don't need us, but they do appreciate having us here. <laughs> Does that make sense? A force to be reckoned with, Orbea has become a role model for New Zealanders, many now studying her history at school. She lobbied a lot for people who didn't know their rights. Like she went to the, um, there was a woman suffering from tuberculosis at a time when nothing very much was being done. So she went to the Minister of Health, she was told to wait, and she was kept waiting and waiting. So the secretary went into the minister's office and said, Suzanne Obe is here and she's getting angry. Suzanne followed her into the office and she said, Suzanne Obe is not getting angry, she is angry. And if something is not done soon for this lady, I'm going to report it, to, I'm going straight to the Dominion Post to have it reported in the next day's edition. So something was done. That's when they, um, started the, the TB hospital at the back of the Wellington Hospital there. The slow process of a canonisation began in 2010. Once verified, it's likely the Whanganui River Road to Jerusalem, as the birthplace of the Compassion Sisters, would become New Zealand's first pilgrim trail. Georgie Ormond, Local Focus.